First question came from my guy Marco. He said, do you believe the Bengals making the Super Bowl with a young, inexperienced receiving core means Ravens can do the same? As always, looking forward to your videos. Ooh, that's a question right there. Um, of course, it's always a possibility. There's always a possibility. Now, I would rather them add an experienced guy just to help out. Because, listen, the Bengals, Chase Young, I mean... Not Chase Young, Jamar Chase. I'll be getting them too mixed up. But Jamar Chase, he was obviously inexperienced. He was a rookie. Uh, T. Higgins, he had a little bit of experience, but it wasn't no crazy experience. But they did have somebody in that room who had experience. Not Super Bowl experience, but had NFL experience. Had clutch time experience. I mean, us Ravens fans know all about Tyler Boyd. So... While they did have a good amount of youth, and obviously Joe Burrow is super young too, they had a, a, a good amount of youth. They still had some veterans there, as well, Joe Mixon as well. So, and then they had some guys on the defensive side of the ball too. So their receiving group is young, but they did have a mix of experience and that veteran leadership as well. And that was on both sides of the ball. So with the Ravens, they can do it. It's possible. Anything's possible. But for me, with the receiver room, I, I would very much like for them to add somebody of significance, too, uh, to just make the group that much more dynamic, uh, to give Lamar Jackson yet another option as a pass catcher. And I, I know a lot of people have made a really, really good point about the Ravens and how they feature wide receivers, or really how they don't really feature wide receivers in the offense. Of course, this offense is built, it's about the tight ends, it's about the running backs, the offensive line, of course, uh, and Lamar Jackson having to do 50 million things as well. And the receivers, they, they come way at the back of the list. Um, so when... Some people, when you talk about adding a receiver, they're like, for what? What's the point? Why should we do it? Well, me, I, I would rather, much rather, quality. Quality, quality, quality over quantity. But you can have both. You can have both. And the Ravens, they, the way that this roster has been constructed, they got quality depth all across, really. All across. And that's a beautiful thing. But at wide receiver, that's where the biggest question mark is. But... Can the Ravens do it? Could they make the Super Bowl with a, a young, inexperienced wide receiver room? They, they could. It, it, again, like I said, it's, it's a possibility for sure. But I would much rather the Ravens go into the season with more of a sure thing at the position. Next question came from my guy Diego. He said, Engraven, hey, hope you're doing well and that your family is staying safe and healthy during these tough times. Hey, appreciate that, Diego. Uh, he said, last time I submitted a question, it was on some free agent linebackers I thought the Ravens should sign. Uh, it seems the Ravens are moving towards giving Malik Harrison a second chance at a starting job. However, I feel the best option for this Ravens defense is to sign or trade for a veteran linebacker. With recent news that Deion Jones and the Falcons are seeking a divorce, what do you think about the Ravens trading if the Falcons cut him? Um, or, or excuse me, he said, what do you think about the Ravens trading or uh, if the Falcons cut him, signing Deion Jones? Uh, I would personally welcome this move considering he is only 27 and it feels like he is way older than that. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't know he was 27. I ain't know that. I thought he was like maybe like 30, 31. That's crazy, man. Um, anyway, just wanted to hear your thoughts. Much love to you and team. Keep it clean. Keep up the good work. And until next time, I'm out. But yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, Deion Jones. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and I, I would, I wouldn't mind if they did that at all. A uh, veteran guy, not too, not an older veteran guy either, uh, just to help solidify that linebacking group. Um, but I just, I wonder what his role would be, what what his place would be. And I mean, I, I wouldn't mind if the Ravens were like, hey. Sign first, ask questions later. Let, let's get him on the squad, and we'll figure out what to do with him later on. Um, but I just wonder, like, if they did that, all right, so what do you do with a Josh Bynes? What do you do with a Patrick Queen? Um, and Patrick Queen, he could still be that, uh, that blitzing linebacker because he's an excellent blitzer. And w with Patrick Queen, once he puts the whole thing together, it's going to be such a beautiful thing. And he's showing us uh, flashes of, of it being a beautiful thing. But uh, just the consistency, that's what he's got to work on the most. 
being a consistent tackler, consistently getting off blocks and whatnot. But uh, uh, Deion John, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. I, I would like if they did that. Um, but I just, I really don't expect them to. Next question came from Anthony. He said, after the Ravens signed Kyle Fuller, which I personally loved, uh, what do you think the Ravens do next? Um, it's like, man, like, they, they got, a, like, we talked about it earlier. They got a lot of depth at a lot of different positions, like, really all across the roster, except at one. So that, that's what I would think that they would do something next, because they've been trying to. But they just haven't sealed any deals yet. And he said, also seeing Chuck Clark at OTA says a lot about how mature he is. And it shows to me that he wants to stay. Many blessings to you and your family. Um, it, it does speak to his maturity for sure. I don't think it necessarily means that he wants to stay. He could. He could not. We'll see. Maybe him and a, the, them had a conversation about something. We don't know. But it does speak uh, volumes about his level of maturity. Because, you know, he's been hearing all this stuff that they've been saying. He hears all of that stuff. Um, so I'm sure he is more than aware of it. So if he really felt some type of way and was like, hey, you know what? Not participating. I, I would have no problem with that. I would not have a problem with that at all. It's OTA. It's voluntary anyway. Um, but the fact that he is there participating says a lot about Chuck Clark. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team keep it clean welcome to another episode of nfl questions from subs a series where you can ask me any question you want and we answer it in a video just like this a uh, special shout out to all our team keep it clean patrons uh, appreciate what you all do for the channel and what you all do for just team keep it clean as a whole uh, we got a lot of great questions and some that we already done answered and a lot that we got to get into. Uh, so let's keep it moving. Inside noise. Next question came from my boy, Rashawn. He said, what's up, team? Keep it clean. It's Rashawn here with another question. And in this question, I will be asking about the inside noise rather than the outside noise that could have been impacting Lamar's game these past couple of years. All right, let's see what he got to say. Uh, we sometimes talk about the outside noise that could and sometimes does impact Lamar Jackson's game from time to time. But with Hollywood being traded and now knowing that he's been wanting a trade for a couple of years, uh, we now know that there was some inside noise going on and noise being told directly to Lamar Jackson himself. Hollywood has stated that he has told Lamar and has had multiple conversations throughout the years about not being satisfied being a Raven and wanting to leave. I believe all of that started after the 2020 season when the soldiers were not being used. Prior to that predictable non-soldier using season, uh, I have, and I'm sure we can all recall Lamar spreading the ball well, and he wasn't really forcing balls to Andrews or Hollywood uh, as he was actually taking what the defense was giving him and living to see another down. Uh, that didn't seem like the case much in 2021. Uh, although in the beginning of the season, Lamar was on pace to have his best year of his career and was in the MVP race once again. Something was off. Lamar wasn't always taking what the defense was giving him and he wasn't spreading the ball around. And most importantly, he was force feeding the ball to Hollywood like there was no tomorrow. Uh, could this have been Lamar listening to the inside noise from Hollywood and, and that kept Lamar from playing Lamar Jackson football to keep his friend in Baltimore? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, and you know, you ever been in a situation where you're in a group setting, um, but one of your friends is there too. Uh, you, you, you're in this group setting, maybe y'all doing like a group project or something. Um, y'all working on it or whatnot in school and one of your friends is, is on your, uh, is in your group and he's just struggling with something. Everybody else is getting it, but your friend is just struggling with something. You're like, man, he ain't getting it or she ain't getting it. All right, I, I got to I gotta go the extra mile so I can help them out because I want them to be here with the rest of us. I want them to get an A on this project like we ho all hope to get as a group, as a collective unit. Uh, so let me go. I'm going to spend some extra time with them, try to we're going to work on this project a little bit more than everybody else because I just I want them to be caught up with us. I want all this, us all to be on the same page. So you're doing that and the other people in the group, they see it. And they're like, hey, what's what's going on? Everything okay? Yeah, you're like, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. But they see that you might be just a little off. Just a little off because you're trying to help your friend out. And that could be the same th thing that happened with Lamar Jackson. There's some really good points that you, uh, you brought out about that inside noise. Hollywood, yeah, like he expressed, he told everybody he hadn't been happy for years. This was not a new thing. This was not 
of just this year, this has been for multiple years, he wanted out. He wanted out. He wanted to be gone. Wanted to get traded. Um, so, of course, uh, and he did say he expressed that to Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson, of course, why would Lamar Jackson want Hollywood to be traded? So Lamar could have been like, you know what? I, I got you. Don't worry about none of that. Uh, I got you. Trust me. I got you. So that could have been a reason for Lamar giving him the ball so much. Because he did throw the ball to him a lot. But at the same time, too, you got to think about it. Like, Hollywood been making plays for Lamar ever since Hollywood's rookie year. That has been his biggest play, uh, his biggest play receiver. Through, ever since 2019. It's been Hollywood. There's been other guys here and there, too. But the one who's been giving him the most has been Hollywood. And him and Mark Andrews, those have been his two guys. And they all, he also force-fed Mark Andrews. But don't nobody complain about that. So it's, 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 the, it's a lot of the same thing. With Lamar Jackson, he, yeah, he, he did force-feed Hollywood. But he force-fed him. It could have been because he, wanted to, he didn't want to lose him. And he wanted to make him happy. But it also could have been because that's who he had the most trust for. Just like he does with Mark Andrews. Um, but now that Hollywood is gone, he, you know what Mark Andrews is still going to eat. But now it, it should result in that ball being spread around a lot more. Uh, but he also had one more paragraph. He said, um, now, now knowing what we know about Hollywood not being happy in Baltimore, I do think that had an impact on Lamar's game. And I think that now uh, that he doesn't have to worry about that inside noise and keeping his friend happy, he can go back to playing Lamar Jackson football. Although there were a whole lot of other things like the old line, Gregory, Lamar needed to work on some things, etc. Uh, that was affecting his game. I believe that the inside noise from Hollywood was definitely getting to him. What do you think? Was the inside noise getting to Lamar? Will Hollywood uh, getting traded improve Lamar's game? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, that's it for me for this question from subscribers episode. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like what Hollywood said to Lamar when Lamar bruised his ankle, I'm out. <laughs> with you <laughs> he's stupid man <laughs> but yeah man um i do think uh hollywood being traded that can it can actually help lamar's game because yeah like we said now he does it he has one less go-to guy um so now you have to go to other guys more and just him building that rapport with a Proche, with a Bateman, with a Duve, with a Tylen, with these other, and whoever else makes the roster at wide receiver, this will give them an opportunity to really be able to show themselves, and Lamar an opportunity to really be able to show himself, um, and just for him to have big trust uh, with his other receivers. Next question came from Elix. said, Odell Beckham Jr. Hey, Engraven, how are you and the family doing? We're doing pretty good. Uh, I have your answer at wide receiver, but I need you to hear, though. Um, it's Odell Beckham Jr. Let's, let me break it down for you. We all know that Odell Beckham Jr. had a second ACL surgery. That's not his fault. I mean, if... Oh, okay, let, let me let you keep going. He says, the doctor said, who did his first surgery, uh, they messed up really bad and that it was going to tear again and that it was going to happen soon, too. Odell Beckham Jr. got surgery on February 23rd, 2022, I think nine days after the Super Bowl, so that would put him at about six months to start field work like running and another two and a half months of doing wide receiver explosion drills routes and doing his personal condition that put us closer to november december uh depending on everything going as scheduled see the first part with that so with odell beckham jr now i love odell beckham jr um and i feel like he would be i feel like he would love to be a raven and he i feel like he would just have so much fun um but if if it wasn't Odell Beckham Jr.'s fault, okay, cool. It wasn't his fault. But it's almost like, and, and if the first doctor messed up, um, you would hope that the second doctor would c clean it up and keep it clean and, and fix it or whatnot. But it's almost like he would be like uh, like damaged goods or something. So if the, if the first doctor messed it up and they expected the tear to happen again a second time, like that's, I, don't, I don't know about that one. Um, and with Odell, like, and I, I, I got to get, to read in the rest of your, your your question but with Odell uh it'd be nice yeah you're gonna get him later on in the season but what does that do for you now what does that do for you early on um and I know Rams they got him late on in the season but they also had a Cooper Cup they also well before the season started they had Robert Woods but he towards ACL they had Van Jefferson too um but like so get, getting him now you're not gonna be able to really get him till later so I just I would rather somebody who can contribute right here right now because then you can start building the chemistry. 
you saw them on the chemistry early with Odell Beckham Jr. That chemistry, it's a possibility that they may never have chemistry like that. Because if he's not going to be ready till like December, that's right before playoff time. And yeah, you got a chance to build some stuff up. But if he's just going to be starting to get into the thick of things and just starting to get back into like football shape, I'm sure Odell going to try to push to go earlier. But say, for instance, it's December. And then he just start getting right. He start doing his explosion drills and the route running and all that. Then it's like, oof, like, oh, okay. Playoffs right around the corner. Do we have time? And all you for Odell Beckham Jr. Once he was activated to the roster, who's getting who's getting deactivated? Who 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 are you putting down for Odell to come up? Especially, and it could be somebody that has chemistry with Lamar, based off of how the year's been going. So, but anyway, let me keep going. He said, if the Ravens were to sign him early and give him the playbook now so he could learn plays, Greg Roman. Oh, he said so he could learn plays, uh, Greg Roman. When the season starts, he'll be on the physically unable to perform list until November. They have about two weeks to bring him to the active roster. Uh, I think in those two weeks, well, it's three weeks, but still. He said in those week, two weeks, Lamar Jackson and Odell Beckham Jr. can somewhat build chemistry. Uh, when it comes to games, they could have him on a pitch count and sometimes have Lamar look his way. To, so start to get so you can start to get comfortable. So going to the playoffs, if we make it, he could benefit us in a good way. To me, the Ravens don't have a problem winning regular season games, but kind of have problems winning, winning the playoffs. Yes, that's true. Um, and I think we need him more around that time uh, more than anything. I feel what you're saying. Um, yeah, I feel I feel what you're saying, and I see why you're saying it. I appreciate you breaking it down the way that you did. Um, but I, yeah, I would just much rather somebody. Right here, right now. So you're not trying to work on building chemistry with a receiver uh, at the end of the season. Um, if you got somebody that that you have that chemistry with already, then that can make the ride that much more smooth. And not saying that you can't build chemistry late, because again, look at the Lions. I'm the Lions. I'm so sorry. Look at the Rams. Matt Stafford, Lions. That's the first thing that clicked. But look at the. How Matt Stafford and the Rams did when they added Odell Beckham. They added him later, and he came through, and he made some plays. He made some big time. I mean, us Ravens fans, we know. We remember that that fourth down clutch catch where it was, it was looking like uh, just one more play. I think it was like fourth and five. It's like one more play, y'all. Come on. And then Odell Beckham Jr. got it. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. That Rams game, man. That the the two the what two games like really upset me the most last year. Um, the Rams game hurt because I just I knew we were gonna win that game, and the Packers went too. Those are two games that I just knew the Ravens were gonna win. Rams and the Packers because everything was against them, and, and I just knew like it was gonna be one of them, almost like a trap game for both of those teams. Because Ravens they were down to their last, they were down to scraps and whatnot on this field on a roster, and the Rams and Packers they were coming in ready, coming in heavy. Uh. Two of the NFC favorites, but I just knew the Ravens were gonna be able to get both of them. But, mm, mm, mm. but anyway, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, they they were still able to get that chemistry late. So I'm not saying that couldn't happen with Lamar and them, but I I know I'd just rather somebody who's impacting it right now. But yeah, you did bring up a good point about the regular season games versus the playoffs. Playoffs is where we need guys to really show up and show out. Uh, for sure, because regular season is cool, and it's been cool. Ravens been doing anything in the regular season, but playoffs, that's still the biggest question mark. Next question came from my guy Deshaun. He said, something I've been thinking about and something I don't really hear people talk about is Ben Mason. I remember we drafted him, and everybody for sure thought Project Pat was out. I, I for sure did, but then they cut him. But anyway, uh, he said, but then they re-signed him. Uh, ben went to the Patriots. Harbaugh wasn't a fan of it. <laughs> But then the Patriots cut him. Then the Ravens got him back. What do you think this means? I don't even know, really. I don't know. I, I figured it was like one of those stay ready so you ain't got to get ready moves because they signed him back before they signed uh, Patrick Ricard. Uh, and Patrick Ricard, they signed him to a three-year deal. So that could be a two-year deal. It could even be a three-year deal. You may make it all three years. But... Um, so with Ben Mason, it might be one of those things where they just keep him around. Maybe, uh, maybe he's on a practice squad. Yeah, just in case Patrick dealing with injuries or something like that. So maybe they keep him around on a practice squad. He's not going to be on an active roster. There, there, there's no way they carry no two fullbacks on an active roster. 
So, I, I, yeah, I think it's just one of those stay ready so you ain't got to get ready moves and he can be the backup to Patrick Ricard, the just in case fullback. The last question on this episode came from my guy, Nick. He said, hey, hope your day is going well. I have a question, more like a vision that I want you to see. Uh, so remember Hollywood wanted to trade and Eric said Hollywood came to him after his rookie year and said that he wanted to be traded or the year after. So listen to this. What if the Ravens already had it set in stone for Hollywood to be traded? Remember that next year we went into the draft and we got Bateman. Uh, so we already got Hollywood replacement, and that's why this year we didn't focus on a big wide receiver in the draft because we already had it. Uh, so what do you think about that? Because we didn't really think about that. Sorry for the long message. Please reply to this in your next video uh, to give our fans some insight on my vision. Thanks. I appreciate it, Nick. Um, yeah, that's. I, I think that's definitely part of it. Um, Rashad Bateman was definitely a uh, part of being a, a Hollywood replacement. Um, and especially because of, I think really Rashad Bateman's skill set, because it differs a lot from a uh, Hollywood skill set. And I feel like with uh, Rashad Bateman's skill set, it probably matches the Ravens and their style of football better because Rashad Bateman is he's more physical uh, than a uh, Hollywood Brown. Um, so you need, obviously need that physicality if you're going to be playing in this Ravens offense. Um, and now that the offense, uh, is going to probably going to feature Rashad Bateman as their, their, their go-to guy at receiver. Uh, that's what the expectation is. You've of course still got to prove it. Um, but that, that's what we all expect to go down. Um, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. Um, so I do think that this this was their plan though, as far as uh, they did. It, it was said that they tried to to they wanted to get a receiver though early. It was said that they wanted to get a receiver, but everybody's just started getting snatched up. Um, and then a little later on, they wanted to get Calvin Austin, but the Steelers were like, "Oh, oh, Ravens want Calvin? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's get him." Um, so yeah, man. I mean, let's. It it, it makes sense. It makes sense because they drafted Hollywood in what 2019 first round. Uh, and then they, and then Boykin in the third round, and then 2020, Duvernay third round, Prochet fifth or sixth round, then 2021, they say, oh, we're going back into the first again. Because 2020, that, 2020 was the soldiers comment. That was the soldiers. Um, and then 2021, it was Rashad Bateman. And again, Hollywood said it's been multiple years that he's asked for the, he, he wanted to be, be out. It wasn't just last year. So if it's been multiple years, that would be at least two. So that would take us uh, back to 2020. So it would just make sense that Rashad Bateman is there uh, to replace Hollywood. And this would allow them, and my guy Rome, he pointed this out like a, a long time ago. Um, I think this, I think like last June, um, because he talked about how, and I was trying to find a message because I was just talking to him about it. Uh, oh, there it goes. Because last June, or June 16th, 2021, he sent me a message. He said, I just thought about something. Every year, teams, the Ravens included, juggle the cap and let players go while signing others. Eric DeCosta will give Lamar, Jackson, Mark Andrews, and others money, but with the drafting of Rashad Bateman, he doesn't have to overpay to keep Hollywood. Eric DeCosta isn't just filling needs. He got his eyes way down the road uh, predicting obstacles, and we obviously know the obstacle that came because Hollywood wanted to be out. So, yeah, it just makes sense. It, it makes sense that Rashad Bateman was there uh, to fill the void that the Ravens expected uh, to come upon.